Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VI. We've gotten a bunch of tips about a swordsman who passed through Miranda, and even the townspeople are talking about him. Except this guy, who wants to tell us about what a cool thief he was. Uh, now that we have Setzer back and we have a new airship to boot, we can investigate that tip a little bit. Uh, so first, we're gonna come over to this house with the pigeons on it. So, remember Lola? She's the girlfriend of that wounded Imperial defector from Mobliz. We helped that guy mail a bunch of letters and parcels to her back in Mobliz uh, in the World of Balance. And once Kefka took over, Mobliz was apparently destroyed. So it's curious how she continues to receive these letters. Art thou well? If all goes well, I should be able to return to thy side before too long. It sounds a little bit strange. Doesn't sound like the letters we would have written her. Or her old boyfriend would have dictated. Uh, and even Celeste points out that the handwriting looks a lot like Cyan's. So she is going to ask us to send one more off. And we'll happily do that. Because we're trying to track those carrier pigeons back. So we come out, interact with the pigeon. And we're going to see where this thing goes. <laughs> we can see it do nearly a 720 and then head off in the direction of... Ooh, where is it going? It's making a little turn. It's heading off to... Zozo. So the carrier pigeon is landing somewhere in the vicinity of, of Zozo. That is a place we haven't been back to in a hot minute. Uh, but off we go. We have our airship parked nearby. We're going to head to Zozo. Uh, someone point out that the reason the pigeon catches Celeste's eye might have to do with the optional scene in which she jumps off the cliff on the solitary island at the beginning of the World of Ruin. Uh, she, I think she sees one when she comes to. Oh, and there was another comment. Uh, pointing out some really cool parallelism between that scene where she's perched on the cliffside getting ready to jump and the opera scene where she's on the, uh, the edge of the balcony and she flings the bouquet over it. What a cool detail. Never really picked up on that, that parallel. So back in... Oh yeah, the gobbledygooks, or gax. Back in Zozo, uh, practically nothing has changed. Nothing very important. Especially about the enemies we're going to run into. We still have all these random encounters in town. They haven't gotten any stronger over the past year. They're, the, they're still the same enemies we were fighting back then. So, think of like the Veil Dancers who are kind of scary. Not anymore. Uh, they are at the same power level that they were before. And we've gotten much stronger in the interim. And the only other thing still left in Zozo that can even do a little bit of damage, and that's still, relatively speaking, are uh, the Hill Gyguses. Still have Magnitude 8, still have... I think they still do Throat Punch. That guy has nothing to say to us. This one, though, if you go north of the pub, we get a bunch of hints from him. Uh, plus, he, he offers to sell you Rust Raid for a thousand gil. He tells you to climb the pub. If you don't do Lola's part of the side quest, he will not give you the Rust Raid, and you need that to proceed. Oh, and Veil Dancer, yeah. Let's see how scary she is now. If she even survives the first- Oh no, she'll get first hit off! 300 it is like a drop in the bucket. When we first came here, that was a kind of scary prospect. Uh, no longer. So we were advised to climb to the top of the pub. Uh, we're going to do that, and since we have the Rust Rid, we'll be able to get through a door up here. The Harvesters, I think, will still counter Steel with their own Steel Command, but since we have not yet gone through the trouble of getting Lock back, it's not a problem. I'm considering going to get Lock before I head to Narsh, just because there are a bunch of Lock Doors in Narsh that... 
Uh, because Locke is a thief he can help you get into. But we'll see how things shake out. Uh, this door should still be the one with the two chests, and the one on the left is rusted shut. But the rust raid dissolves it, allowing us to spill out onto Mount Zozo. So let's uh, take a look around up here. Apparently, ooh, yeah, these are the stronger version of the Hill Gygases. We can get a Chocobo Rush on him. Uh, these guys, they can counterattack with some one-hit kills. They have a stronger version of the Throat Punch. I think it's called Uppercut, which I want to say they're capable of using twice in a row. <laughs> and it will hit for close to a thousand, a, a minimum of a thousand. So anytime you run into them, uh, they can they can cause you a few problems. Other than that, these are like these enemies uh, on Mount Zozo are just stronger versions of the Zozo enemies. That's where all the strong versions of them went. The ones in Zozo didn't get any stronger, but once you head to the mountaintop to investigate the carrier pigeons, that's that's where the problems start. There's also a really strong boss up here, which I don't know how we're going to fare against. Uh, it is optional. We can come back for it later, but more on that in a little bit. And you do want to make sure that you grab um, most of these chests. There's some really good elemental shields up in here. Punishers, you know what they do. They look identical to the Zozo enemies. Mug bears, uh, they are very similar in that they can steal gill from you, which you get back at the end of a battle. Ah, oh, man, we're not going to see the dive bomb. That should work on him. Yeah, no instant death protection on the mug bear. He didn't even steal like 8,000 gill from me. How nice. Oh, the stupid Mycidian rabbit. Looks like Vivi. Or the, uh, the Black Mages from the old, old Final Fantasy games. So I think after we grab the chest, we want to work our way south down uh, this set of stairs. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, because you can see the beam of light down there. Uh, this should be, I think, the Thunder Shield. Oh, the Ice Shield. Uh, that must be the Thunder Shield up above. Or the, the Aegis. Now we'll just head back down. Uh, the beams of light in this cave, they're really what you want to pay attention to because they give you a point of reference for where you are and where you need to go. And they're the only real unique landmarks that you get. This is the Thunder Shield. Okay, cool. Uh, the Thunder Shield is going to come in handy. It absorbs lightning spells. Oh, a single mug bear? That's nothing. Still 9,000 gil for me, though. Uh, it absorbs lightning spells. It completely completely blocks wind elemental attacks. Uh, and it also halves damage from other elements, and you can also use it if you want to waste it to cast Thundaga one time before it breaks. Kind of a waste. Uh, that's, yeah, that's Aegis. Aegis Reflector. And a gold hairpin, what do you know? The hairpin, uh, I think that's the item that we could have gotten from Lone Wolf as a sacrifice uh, if of losing uh, Mog. Could have sacrificed him to go get that gold hairpin. But hey, what do you know? We found one anyway. And the gold hairpin by itself is not really a useful relic. However, we can go bet it for something much better at the Colosseum later. Uh, so once I go take a little intermission between episodes, I think we're going to head down there. Ooh, Punishers and a Devil Fist. Uh, much like some of the ninja-type enemies we met up on Mount Colts when we were going to uh, recruit Saban in the first place, way back when. But the two Punishers, they're going to wind up being the most durable enemies anyway. In fact, the Devil Fist should not get a chance to attack. She just leaves them. I don't think they do Mad Sickle like some of the other enemies with that, uh, with that sprite. So, aside from taking a, an extra hit or two, 
nothing to worry about. Uh, there's one or two more enemy types up here. Nope. Uh, there are also variants of the Delta Bugs that we saw back in the Serpent Trench. Uh, not particularly unique ones, though. So, because these aren't dangerous and they're fairly brittle, I'm gonna clean them up with a little bit of AoE, some multi-target Fyras, and if that doesn't do the trick, we still have the Flash waiting in the wings. So, even though I call them relatively strong versions of the enemies that we fall all throughout Zozo. Uh, they're still not very dangerous. Just the, uh, the, the variant of the hill guy gets up here in the caves. But that's very often the case in Final Fantasy Dungeons, aside from really late endgame ones. Uh, they're mostly here to soften you up for bosses. Which we will get to just as soon as we take a detour down to find the person we came to grab in the first place. So instead of heading towards that save point, uh, go south in the cave, past another beam of light, and outside once again in the bottom right corner. And hopefully Delta Bugs, no! Oh, ooh, ooh. Okay, that's what they are. They're called Luridans. I just wanted to see the, the palette swap sprites. <laughs> Always nice to see as many of the enemies in the game as possible even when they are palette swamps. I think that's gonna be them, though. I think they're gone. Oh no, wow! They survived quite a bit. Were they just holding on by a, ch by a hair? Yep. <laughs> oh, poor little Delta Bugs. We learned death, okay. Wanted to make sure that I had that. There are a couple of, of spells that I have on some non-optimal, uh, it's locked, some non-optimal Esper configurations on right now. I'm writing to beg for your forgiveness. I'm guilty of perpetuating a terrible lie. I've only now realized the error of my ways. I hope I can correct a great wrong. Your boyfriend, who you thought was in Mobley's, passed away some time ago. I've been writing in his stead. We humans tend to allow the past to destroy our lives. I implore you not to let this happen. It's time to look forward, to rediscover love, and embrace the beauty of life. You have so much life left to live. Signed, Cyan. So, he, Cyan's been... Oh, man. I thought hit an X again would pick up the letter, not scroll back through all of the text. Uh, so, Cyan's been hanging out up here. Writing letters to Lola. God knows why. He's preparing to send another one off via the carrier pigeon that just arrived. Again, I'm seeing faces. Um, I'm seeing faces in the clouds and the mountaintops. Pretty vista, though. What is that called? Not pareidolia. Pareidolia is... Wait, no, no, no. It is pareidolia. I'm thinking of the other one, uh, apophenia, which is... Uh, pattern recognition. Or seeing patterns where there are none. But pareidolia has to do with faces. Like seeing the face of Christ in toast. In burnt toast. Cool! Cyan is back with us. That was really easy. How did that find me? Tell me that I did not read my letters. Yeah, all his mushy love letters. And uh, these are all the flower arrangements that you could see in Lola's house back when we were there. Those are some strong-ass carrier pigeons! A giant bouquet of flowers? This would be fairly heavy. To fly cross-continent with plus letters trapped to their legs? Damn, man. Train those birds well. Train them in leg day. Everybody's just standing on the furniture, uh, the, the treasure chest, everything, causing a scene. <laughs> oh, I love how indignant Cyan gets, but it's all in good fun. It's old friends reuniting. It's a nice feel-good moment. Uh, but we still have learned that poor girl and why Pastor Moret. Yeah, yeah, okay, here we go. Well, I heard that she sent a letter each day but never received any replies. Something inside me snapped. That explains it. Cool. Good enough. As I wrote to that girl, I realized it was very much like her. 
I was looking behind, full of despair. As, uh, despair. My eyes were blinded. It's now time to face the world. Oh, and look at this. He's even given us a, a hint about Sir Gal, who went back to the belt to become stronger to face Kefka. So one character leads us to the next. Very nice, logical flow we have going on. Uh, we still have the matter of this locked chest, though, so let's go back outside of where Cyan was standing. This little glimmer is not a save point. It is an item. It's the key to that treasure chest. Must be keeping something pretty good in it. Uh, let's see. Machinery for dunces. An illustrated guide to machinery. Cure mechanical ineptitude in six easy steps. Understanding machines magazine and... Bushido in the bedroom? The kind of magazines you would expect to find in maybe, uh, maybe Edgar's boudoir. After all, he is our machinist. Okay, now the only thing we have left to do uh, before we're done with the cave, with uh, Mount Zozo is the switch that we found uh, up above near the save point. Right before we made the turn off at the fork, uh, to come and get Cyan. Cyan is unfortunately not going to be in the party. We still have Setzer. This is okay because Setzer can act as an off healer for uh, the fight we have coming up. Actually, actually, he's going to be more of a main healer since we want to concentrate a lot of Celeste's power on using Thundara. Uh, but we're going to save. We're going to tent up and we are going to take a couple minutes to prepare ourselves and optimize our equipment. So again, as usual, see you in a sec. Now that we're ready, we can come over here, we can stand on the pressure plate, opens the chest to the far north, and out pops this cutesy looking dragon sprite. And we want to go into the dragon's path, which is just a little bit north of the save point. If you come back later, you can potentially have uh, some much better gear to take this guy on with. Uh, some better armor for his elemental attacks, another thunder shield which helps immensely against him, and you'll just generally be a lot beefier. But we're already in the neighborhood, so let's let's try it. Uh, now, this is going to be a challenge. Not necessarily because the boss is one of the hardest or more complicated ones, but because we are way under level for this. This fight is tuned for us to come back later. So we're going to need big heals coming out. Uh, we need to slowly whittle him down, especially with Celeste, because she knows Thundara. And he is weakest to lightning. Uh, his name would make you think otherwise, but that's because he does a lot of wind elemental attacks, not because he's strong against lightning. Aside from that, it's really straightforward. Uh, keep the heals on deck. Don't let anyone dip below, like, I would say a thousand to be safe. Except, uh, Celeste, because she can take a physical hit and she's the one I put the Thunder Shield on. So she'll just completely nullify any kind of wind attacks he does. Which is, like, most of his big scary stuff. Uh, if you get a minute of respite, lay into him big. Then just go back to throwing out the Curas. Put your one Thunder Shield on whoever you think is most crucial. Keep alive and the least capable of surviving on their own. Leaf Swirl is gonna hurt. Yeah, that, that hurts everybody. That is not a Wind Elemental attack. So the Thunder Shield does not necessarily do anything. And we don't have more than one Cura on deck right now. That's maybe the scariest point. Uh, as long as we get this second Kira coming out from Celeste after Sabin's Aura Cannon, we're in... okay. We're good. We don't need to go into crisis mode, I think. No, that won't kill Celeste. It did do a number on Edgar. We need everybody on heals right now. Not sure if it's worth Resin Sabin, because I don't know if he's going to survive to get cured up. But we'll try it once. I'm not going to get stuck in that Phoenix Down loop. Because that will be a waste. In fact, uh, Saban kind of did his, his good. This might... Let's try one. Let's try one. Because what I expect is going to happen... This is the best 
possible situation. Uh, Phoenix down right after Storm Dragon gets an attack off. He might... He's going to eat one Cura. He's still not out of the woods because he's not going to be above a thousand. This Wind Slash probably re-kills him, but everybody else is topped off. Yeah. No, Saban did his little man damage. He helped out. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna focus now on just keeping the remaining three alive. And since we oh fuck, that is not what I need right now. I need a damage from you, Setzer. I should have put the uh, the Giltoss relic on him for some guaranteed stuff. I've gotten pretty consistent with his slots. Every now and then, there's a big miss like that, and it sucks. We're still getting there, though. Dive Bomb! Yeah! That's gonna do some magic. Mmm. It's at least 2k. And so cool looking! 2,500. Arrow, if that's Celeste? Oh, no, that's AoE. Shit! Okay, that did less than I was expecting. It did, I think, on par with the Wind Slash. So I'm not that worried about it. I think we're doing it. I think we're okay. Uh, it sucks that Saban wasn't able to live through the fight, but for this fight, he was the weak link anyway. That was extremely lucky that that didn't do four more damage. And that he didn't follow up. Hit Edgar. Because Edgar's got good heals too, along with Setzer. Uh, Celeste, we want to keep attacking as often as possible. Because Thundara is hurting him. He's got 40-something thousand HP, so this can also be a long fight for the point in the game that we are at. This is good. This is fine. As long as we're not getting more rabbits out, Prismatic Flash will do a thousand, maybe two. Everybody's above a thousand health, so no one's in danger of getting one-shotted or even killed with a follow-up, and that's it. That's the fight. Woo! Man, that's... that's could go overkill and get another prismatic flash. <laughs> yeah, man. Woo! Scary. Scary boss, uh, for where we're at. And look at that. Eight legendary dragons, seven of them remain. Uh, Storm Dragon is arguably the hardest of the eight legendary dragons, which we're just now learning about from that little text blurb. I'm sure, somehow, some way, we're gonna run into a couple more of them. <laughs> and now that we're all done, we never have to come back to Mount Zozo. Isn't that nice? We've got everything cleared out while we're here on the first trip, even though it was a little bit of a struggle. So nice. We can warp out of the dungeon. Love that spell. Fucking super good. And now, let's uh, let's wrap up business with Miranda and with Lola and see what she has to say about everything that has just transpired. Oh, get out of my way. It's not like he's on crack. Oops. All right, hey Lola, what's up? I knew these flowers and letters weren't sent by my boyfriend, I just didn't want- Oh yeah, I was lying to myself. The pain I felt in my heart became bearable, and I'm sure whoever wrote them has suffered greatly. Because they're, in, in some ways, kindred spirits, Cyan and Lola. We're still busy trying to rebuild the town, the town being Mobliz. So that's the last letter, the one that we saw Cyan send off in the Carrier Pigeon, right before we confronted him. Uh, now, there's some special Cyan-only dialogue. I forgot we actually need him in the party. Uh, so we're gonna return to the ship real quick and just get him in there. So we can get closure for both Lola and Cyan. The layout of the Falcon is a little bit different from the Blackjack, which I think is a cool, unique detail. This guy is right here, this time, uh, to de-equip the party, or anyone not in the party. And I think Cyan is hanging out down below deck in what I guess is the engine room.
So let's just whoop, put him in the party. Put everybody else in. Because I think some of them have unique dialogue. And if not, eh, then we're ready to roll out next time. Now stay out of my way. Thank you all. Oh, they're being so nice. Now let's see what her, what she has to say to her beloved. Hmm, that's all the same. There we go, that's what changes. Actually, you already have met him. Just shoves Edgar out of the way. Oh no, that was... Look to the future, we have a lot left to live for. Yeah, okay. And there's one more thing that we can do. Look to the future, I'll take your words to heart and try my best. You can exchange the letter. And that letter again is the one we read on his desk back in Mount Zozo. Realize the error of my ways, blah blah blah. It's the confession letter. And it echoes those words again, you have so much life left to live. So we've helped Lola find closure. And... Cyan, to some extent, he was writing to her... therapeutically. But now, it's time to follow up on Cyan's tip about Gao, back in the belt. Uh, there is... whoops. There's one particular point of interest that we can hit, uh, on the belt. And it's this cave. We'll be going into that momentarily. Uh, first up, let's get Setzer back in the party. Because Setzer learned an ability that's going to be helpful uh, in the upcoming dungeon. So we're not replacing him with Cyan just yet. Even though I would like to. He is utility for us right now. You might have noticed that the World of Balance was very, very linear. Uh, we never had tons of side quests we could do. And while you can freely go wherever you want once you get once you get the uh, the airship, especially, the story pretty much funnels you in one direction. Uh, the world of ruin is much more open. You have a lot to do, and you can essentially do it in whatever order you want. For instance, we could have gone back to Narsh and gotten some party members. We could have gone and recruited Terra, we could have just come back to Mount Zozo later and did the Storm Dragon at a later time, when it would have been easier. Uh, you could save Gal and, and Shadow last. You can skip all of that completely and go to Fanatic's Tower or go to Kefka's Stronghold. You get more options in the world of Bruin. And, and it can get fairly complex with all the different things you can do to prep for one area or the other. I forgot you actually need a free slot in the party in order for Gao to show up. I've been walking around the Velt for like at least seven or eight minutes doing random battles and wondering why Gao was not showing his face. And the first time back, it's like a 50-50 chance he shows up. We still have more dried meat in the inventory, so we're going to do the same thing we did last time we were on the Velt and met Gao. We're going to give him some meat to bring him back to our side. <laughs> Hey, we know your gal. We know your friend. Yeah, let's do that. Let's travel together. So we got Gal back. Gal did not require a lengthy or elaborate side quest to get. <laughs> Oops. Hit that same button every time. So real quick, we want to go back to that uh, default party layout. Edgar, Celeste, Sabin, Setzer, because we did teach Setzer a uh, useful ability for an upcoming boss in this uh, in this cave that we conveniently parked right outside of. So we're gonna kill two birds with one stone. Actually, in this episode, I guess it's three because we got Cyan back, we got Gal back, and we're about to go get Shadow as well. Cave in the belt. So why is Shadow held up in this cave? Oh, and there is a familiar bark. It's Interceptor. So at least we know the two of them are together. Would have been nice if we had just Interceptor as a party member. <laughs> I 
Ah, two insights. I believe they absorb Blizzard. They do a very, very weak Life Leech attack called Doomsickle or something. Uh, and they are weak to fire. I think it's kind of weird that an attack named Doomsickle does not actually afflict Doom. I wish I had actually hit Saban. Because it's going to hit for like 50 damage and heal them for 50. It's pathetic. Which isn't to say that there aren't strong enemies in here, it's just these are not one of them. Uh, there are also very few enemies in here. So most of the time you're going to be fighting giant praying mantises. For some reason, he never came near when all four of us were together. Huh. Three of us recently went hunting in the veldt. We saw some weird kid addressed in all hides, giving you another hint that Gal is out here. In a forest north of the veldt, devils... Wait. Dw uh, that must have been dwells. I, mis I misread that. Yeah, but big dinosaurs. Uh, if you want to grind in the world of ruin, you go to that forest and kill dinosaurs. Uh, if you notice Kutch is there, it's because I went back to open up... Ooh, the Gorgamera. A uh, slot in the party. This one is one I don't see very often, and that sprite is so detailed and amazing. I find a lot of uh, the more detailed sprites in FF6 kind of hard to read. This one's just clearly super cool. Uh, I think if you let this one get to a fourth turn, it starts doing wild, like, tri-elemental attacks. So just don't do that. It has a lot of HP, not enough that you should be letting it get a fourth turn in. Um, but I went back to open up the slot in the party because, whoops, uh, noticed while I was talking to the bandits that, uh, we need to reduce the number of people in the party in order to approach Shadow. So we needed that empty slot, in, as it turns out. Uh, sometimes you do, not always, but sometimes. Uh, a lot of people you recruit, they'll you can have a full party and they'll just go back to the airship on their own. It was not the case with Gao and it wasn't will not be the case uh, with Shadow, unfortunately. Uh, so that means we miss out on having Setzer with us. I double checked though, and uh, I actually taught uh, the ability that we needed from Setzer to a different party member at some point without realizing it. Uh, Setzer was going to be a debuffer for the upcoming boss, but I guess we didn't need him after all. Unfortunately, that's probably going to be the last we see of Setzer going forward. He's not my, uh, my normal preference for party members. We'll get to show off some more. Nope, not this one yet. Oh, man. This one's finicky. Okay, I can't go straight down. Can I go up? If I go over a little bit, up or down, there we go. This is Monster in a Box. And uh, the Death Warden, its main MO is just to cast death on your party one by one. Pretty sure it counts as undead, so it should be vulnerable to stuff like Raze, or if it really comes down to it, Phoenix Downs. I think the Raze alone should do it. Uh-oh, that didn't do it. <laughs> Hopefully a Phoenix Town does? Oh no, it just got one last death off before the rays took effect and killed it. Nice. Why? But why though? Well, that's gonna exhaust some of our high potions. Not like we can't buy more, especially with all the money we just made up in uh, Mount Zozo. Whew. Yeah, we are. We're looking... Good, as far as money goes. Uh, so now is the time to go down. One million twin sites later, we finally get to the other, the underside of the cave. We're gonna continue going down, continue southward. Uh, this boulder is in our path for now, but but head through the door. There's a switch right here. Uh, that moves the boulder down one block, so we can get through. But there's also a chest down here with an Ichigeki. And we will be able to get to that side in just a sec.
There he is. Uh, we have to pass through the underside and come back around, though. Which is handy because there is a save point up here. Oh, this is a little uh, bridge. So, again, we have to go to the underside. We do the same thing we did before, except without the lengthy prep time. Uh, we're just going to 10 up because we did use a lot of MP going through here. Tents are the fucking best. Oh, I love them. And Interceptor's being a good loyal dog, watching over his injured master. Apparently gravely injured. Ooh, who's that? Looks like Lone Wolf, but what it actually is, is Senior Behemoth. Uh, King Behemoth. Starts the fight off with a holy. Ooh, that's gonna hurt someone. Ooh, that hurt real bad. This one actually is a similar moveset to Dullahan, who we fought last time with the Blizzaras, the Blizzagas, and the Holy. But he also has Meteor, which sucks. Just like Dullahan, if you have Reflect on, he'll use an attack called Devil Claw to remove it. Uh, and then he'll Meteor you. Uh, the difference between him and Dullahan that makes this an easy fight is we can punish him with status ailments. First off, you can cast Imp on him. Make him a little baby Bayamoth. Baby Senor Bayamoth. And after you do that, because Imp will change his AI script so that he takes multiple attack turns in a row, even though they're just attacks because he's Imped. Uh, after that, though, you can just cast Stop on him, stop him dead in his tracks, and go all out. This is a really easy fight if you know that significantly tougher if you don't know about his weakness to uh, certain status ailments. Oh man, he's taking so much more damage, I think, because of the imp. And it's reasonable that you wouldn't know about his weakness to uh, the status ailment because a lot of bosses either have hyper-specific statuses that they are vulnerable to, or they have no... They, they have, like, full status immunity. But we're not done with Behemoth King. Uh, he raises up as an undead version of himself. We can continue to abuse him, though. Look at that. Oh, came back. Whoops. Uh, it also maintains our row, even though it switches us to the left side. Uh, and all the usual things work against him. Also, instant death, like you saw. Banish works on him. Uh, Raze should work on him. Phoenix Down will do the trick. Oh, that missed. Ah, missed again. Only thing you have to worry about is the miss rate. Eventually, though, a Raze or a Phoenix Down or something is gonna... is gonna hit. Uh, because he's vulnerable to instant death, that also means stuff like uh, Mog's Cave-In Dance will work, but eventually you'll just get it. Now, we can't treat his wounds here, but we're gonna fly him back to Thamasa. And it will fly you back there automatically. And it's somewhat significant that they fly back all the way to Thamasa, even though there are other towns along the way that we could have stopped at. This town has a special significance for Shadow. If you fail to save him from the floating continent, you obviously don't get him. He's dead and gone forever. But that also means you miss out on this dream sequence. Uh, this one is the World of Ruin exclusive nightmare. And it happens to take place, again, in the Masa. I won't be coming back. I want you and the girl to live in a peaceful world. Well, we know of a of one girl in the Masa. We know of one named uh, female NPC. That's Realm. Uh, Shrago's granddaughter. And Realm also had a, a special bond with Interceptor. 
So it's possible Shadow's talking about Realm, isn't it? Uh, we'll explore that more next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. No elixir in the clock. Ah, take it easy. Have a good one.